Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, depending on where you are in this world today. Um, we are doing a continuation of our uh, training series here. Um, we're doing the 201 today. Um, we are doing this live as opposed to record it because of some of the changes that we've made in the UI, which you guys have seen over the last um, couple of weeks. While we have people still signing on, let me do a couple things. One is to go over just the standard uh, go to webinar um, process. Right, this is live. We want you to ask questions. Uh, take advantage of that questions panel in the go to webinar control panel. Um, if it's relevant, I'm going to invite Giancarlo or one of our team members to interrupt me, and we can uh, take the question there. Otherwise, we'll do our best to get to them at the end. Um, of course, for more complex questions, uh, feel free to reach out to support at domotes.com. And I'm likely going to make references to help.domotes.com, which is kind of our knowledge base and our support center. Um, with that being said, let us do a quick overview of what we'll be talking about today. We'll, we'll do an overview of what we talked about in the 101 just real quick. Um, continuing some of the basics, we'll start to talk about reporting and logging. We'll talk about some aspects of network diagnostics and performance measuring. And then we get into network security, which I think is a, a pretty hot topic for many service providers and integrators uh, here today. So we'll talk a little bit about how we address that. And then the last part I want to uh, talk about in the basic side of this is really managing all of your agents, monitoring all of your agents. So we'll talk about how the dashboard uh, can help you there. One of the things that we often get questions about too is in the right hand column, we'll address device sensors a little bit more, what that means, setting up an SNMP sensor and how you can do that. We'll talk a little bit about TCP sensors and what those are good for. Then we get into some more of the advanced learning. This is a fairly big topic. Uh, definitely we'll reference the help center on this one. But the idea behind this is starting to dive into how you configure shared alerts and what shared alerts are. And then we'll look even at how you can um, manage how you get some of the alerts through the digest, right? The consolidation of alerts, as well as being able to snooze if you have a site or system that's down for a little bit. And then lastly, we'll talk about some of the external services that we can integrate into uh, the Domotes platform. So with that being said, we will just dive right into a demo here. Let me shift around to get to the Domotes application. Oh, I squished it because I was playing with it earlier. Let me open it up so it's a little bit wider for you guys. Um, I'm going to, just in the interest of time, because we usually run long in this demo, I'm actually going to skip some of the examples that we've done. You saw a few of the examples in the 101 where we talked about uh, you know how we can do uh, manage switch configuration backups. I think that's a really important aspect of any network monitoring platform. In fact, when we talk about security, that's a critical component to CIS control number 12, which is an important part of many of the different security frameworks that are out there. Um, I also showed last time connecting to uh, PCs or servers like VMware type systems where we could see some of the OS, at, OS aspects of it, as well as uh, some of the physical and logical memory and how things are allocated there. And then we also talked about uh, NAS drives, right? As, just as an example, of course, I think we showed printers and looking at ink levels. So there's lots of things that we can do, but we'll skip this for the most part. Let's dive right into uh, the reporting and logging side of things. Um, first and foremost, when you go into any site, you'll notice under the site tabs that there is this logging and reporting um, area. So a couple ways in which we can uh, generate reports, but let's talk, let's actually talk about logging first um, and why we do logging. Logging is really useful for auditing uh, purposes. When you can see which one of your team members or users within the Domo's platform have access to particular um, site or access particular devices uh, within the platform. This log essentially records uh, the username that accessed it, the date and time that it was accessed, as well as the device and what they did, right? If they power cycled an outlet, if they made a remote connection, 
they grabbed a snapshot from the security cameras. These are all things that are captured into these logs. Um, as I said, in my mind, this is a great way to help you better understand uh, what it is your teams are doing. But I would also point out that this is a great way to stay um, in communications with your customers as you're doing technology business reviews or quarterly business reviews with those um, clients of yours. Now, I bring up these logs first because when we go to the reports section, you will notice that we, we can generate reports, but I'll just point out now that you can actually attach that activity log to some of these reports. So let's talk about what the reports are good for. Um, in my mind, this is a great way to maintain um, communications with your clients. Uh, I've always felt that uh, keeping in touch with your clients and ensuring that conversations are continuously happening, even if there are not problems associated with the network infrastructure, being able to give your clients a report, being able to let them know that you are checking in on them is just a great way to fulfill that uh, service level agreement that you have. Um, how do these reports get generated? You can do it one of two ways. You can either generate a manual report by selecting usernames that you would wish to send a report off to. Um, or, well, and along with that, along with those names, you can come down and select what contents you'd like to have inside this report, as well as how you may want it structured. You'll notice that you can um, put some of these uh, sections, if you will, into different orders, just depending on what it is you want to do and what you'd like to communicate to your clients. We have a lot of service providers and a lot of integrators that will also generate these reports simply for their own purpose. Um, when you see what's in it, such as uh, the device information that comes out of this and some of the uh, connection history that's in it, this is a great way just to ensure that things aren't breaking. I would say fundamentally you're probably using the ticketing systems uh, as well as like shared alerts to really track what's going on in the system, but this is an alternate way that you can get a higher overview of what's going on. So not only can you generate this on a demand basis, but you also at the top here you have the automatic aspects what this will do is at the beginning or the first day of each month um, if this is enabled it will send out a report with the selected information and in the structure that you want to uh, the recipients that you have selected here so this is a great way just to send a, a basic report out to your clients um, on an automated basis and again they don't uh, necessarily have to do anything with it, but I think as they read through it, they'll see, okay, you know, my service provider is indeed watching over me and, and helping me maintain uh, these systems. Now, these reports are good because they come as a PDF to the emails, but a lot of times what you're looking for is how can I get detailed or specific information about all the devices within this particular site? There's a couple ways in which you can do that. One is you can simply send an email which will take a snapshot of all the devices that are on that network, provide it to you in a CSV file, along with a lot of the data that's in there. I believe last time um, I showed you this, this is another trick that you have where if you go under the devices tab and on the desktop application, because of the way we have it structured, you'll notice up at the menu we have this import export. You can export this device list directly to an XLS uh, file. Uh, this is just another way in which you can um, uh, save the data. Let me do this. I have not opened up Excel, so let's go yeah, do that on another page so you can just see what this looks like. I updated my computer, so this may take a second for uh, Excel to pop up, but when it does, what you'll see is a very consolidated list of all the devices that are on this network and um, Okay, Excel came up, let me open it. So to the desktop, okay. Oops, I saved it to the desktop, I apologize. I might have saved it to the downloads. Um, we'll generate that file again. Uh, pictures, that's just not the very logical place to put that. Let's put it on the desktop. Okay, there we go. So when I open this, you'll see, let's bring it up to the screen here. 
that this list here is quite detailed with everything that you get, not only the names of all the devices that you've discovered, but any of the network-based information about that. You'll see things like um, when it was seen, when the status of this device changed, if there's any sort of uh, application protocols. A lot of the information that we show in the info tab of each device will be displayed in this Excel file. I like to use this Excel file to do things like filtering of devices. Um, so again, if you want to just look at, I always look at all these, right, just the cameras, right, you can filter by that. And then you can make any changes that you need to change. You can save it. And then what you can do is actually import this back in. But when it comes to documentation, right, reporting, logging, this is a great way to get a snapshot, an immediate snapshot of all the shot, <laughs> snapshot of all the devices that are currently on your network online and um, available for management. So I wanted to point that out. We shall not save this. So that really covers some of the reporting, logging, and reporting and logging and the conveniences there. Let's talk a little bit about uh, network diagnostics that we do. There's a couple ways in which Domotes handles uh, network diagnostics. First and foremost, under the network performance tab, if you go here, you are essentially um, getting a view of the internet speed tests that happen from the point of view of the agent. Um, I say that because um, one of the things that you guys know, if you've ever used FAST or MLAB or uh, UCLA, you know that depending on the ISP, depending on the machine that it's running on, depending on lots of different things that are maybe clogging bandwidth on the port, these numbers can vary. You see a lot of variation here in this site because it's on a cable modem. So that's just important to know. This uh, note about reading more will tell you all about the ways in which these systems work and how, what can affect it. I will say that if you're running the Domotes agent on a higher end server, you know, an Intel based processor with uh, plenty of memory and CPU, your performance can uh, be very high. But if you're running it on something like a Raspberry Pi or you're running it on a NAS drive, you may not get the performance that you expect from the ISP. But this is a still this is still a very good and useful check to ensure that um, you know the internet is at least alive and kicking. You can disable this. We get a lot of questions on that. Um, this test happens once every six hours, so roughly three to four times a, a day, depending on when it starts. Um, you can turn it off. You can select different uh, speed methods, speed test methods, if you want. Most people. Uh, and I will say this depends on the platform, but most people will see FAST and MLAB on their systems. A um, couple of things that I will also point out here. Um, this test, while it happens every six hours, it absolutely can vary based on the conditions of the internet service provider, the servers that are happening. Um, one thing what we get a lot of questions about is when, like between MLAB, FAST, and UCLA, the server locations are often in different places. UCLA is very well known for putting servers right at the ISP, where, and it's one of the reasons we chose not to use UCLA, but with FAST and MLAB, they're actually going out to servers that really cross the network, cross out of your ISP and into other, um, either universities or other server-based locations. So keep all of that in mind as you are using these speed tests. You'll notice across the top on the network, performance tab, you can do route analysis, so you can go to common servers, you can put your own server in here if you want to do that or own hosting, um, but this will essentially do some uh, route analysis to find out how the agent is getting out to the network uh, through these services. And one other thing you'll note is under the downtime tab, so when um, a system actually goes down, and it's really good to understand this if you want to read the how it works, but we're really not gonna show you an actual down unless the service went down for something like greater than five minutes. Um, so keep that in mind. You may see blips where you'll lose connections during a temporary test, but it really has to be that the system actually goes down. And then the last thing I'll point out here on the kind of, kind of the broader WAN side of the network performance, if you go to the info tab, you'll find your public IP address names, you'll find any gateway information, as well as any interfaces that have been associated 
with the dome modes agent. Um, this can be done based on, uh, you know, VLANs or subnets that you are looking at here. Um, we will talk about more advanced alerts. We've talked about this in the 101, but the idea behind the alerts tab is just to give you a, a place to go quickly so that you can set up alerts around the network as a whole, right? When the agent loses connection to the cloud, when new devices are discovered on the VLANs or the LANs and subnets that you're monitoring, as well as any security issues, which we are going to talk about here in the next section. So keep all that in mind. The, the thresholding on these is important because Domodes tries to um, qualify what we think is uh, an acceptable level or threshold value to be testing at and alerting towards, but you can come in here and change this as needed. Um, if you have specifics that you care about. Next thing when it comes to network diagnostics that Domo does. So everything we talked about there was really the network as a whole. Let's talk about individual devices and through latency or round trip delays. You'll notice on the devices uh, page, you have um, all of these uh, essentially graphs that show the latency of particular devices. Let's get out of all of these. Um, mobile devices, but here you'll see where devices have um, round trip delay testing. If you go into a particular room, since this has a little bit higher latency, we'll work, look at it, or into a device under the info tab, you'll see that you can even look at the historical ping ranges for these devices, and you can zoom in and out. We capture this for 30 days, but here's a really good example of where clearly something changed on the network. Now, for the most part, I'm not concerned about this because it's just the touch screen, but you may be in a situation, especially with things like AV equipment or voice over IP equipment, where um, latency can um, introduce problems. In some sense, latency, having a high average latency is not a bad thing, but if it varies greatly, um, that's when it can affect a lot of your performance or your systems. So how do we do these round trip delay testing? These are essentially ICMP requests, also known as ping tests. Um, we think that it's a great way to validate not only that a device is online, that's one of the ways in which Domotes uses that. Um, ICMP requests are a layer three uh, type of protocol. So we're essentially pinging that IP address and we're looking for how long it takes to get uh, that response back and we're capturing that in this round trip delay. Um, I would point out that things that can cause, there's a lot of things that can cause latency to increase uh, beyond certain thresholds. A um, couple things, one to note is uh, ICMP requests are usually a lower priority within a managed switch ar architecture, as it should be. But most of the time packets will get through and allow ICMP requests to happen without uh, disrupting, uh, let's say bandwidth or performance on networks for things that you need. Um, if you have several devices that are starting to consume more and more uh, bandwidth or they're starting to do large packets, right, jumbo frames as they say, then you're going to start to see latency increase for other devices. This is a great way to start to validate that there may be something going wrong in the network. So putting, a, uh, putting an alert um, at a certain threshold or level within devices, right, this median latency, is often a good idea, especially for critical devices or infrastructure devices that you're worried about. You can also set up packet loss checks. So again, this packet loss means that a ping did not go through. It was blocked by, um, a, it was blocked by some other bandwidth or some other higher priority packets. But then um, essentially what I, I will say is that the latency was beyond one second. And if it was beyond one second for the, the response to come back, then we just assume it's a drop packet. And that's how we start to calculate that. You'll notice for certain devices, um, let's go back to like this wireless device here. Uh, a lot of times you'll see, well, this doesn't have too many, but you'll see packets being dropped. And for wireless systems, that's generally okay. You really need to question um, if you're, you know, alerting or validating latency on wireless devices, if that's the right thing to do. 
but it can be done and just depends on how you have the network set up and how critical that system is. Oh, I should point out as well, we go back to um, the device list here. You may have noticed at the very top, I have this server. Uh, we talked about in uh, the uh, 101, how you can set up external hosts to be set up in uh, your system and you can ping or check those. You can, when you're looking at external hosts like this BlueJeans server, also do latency testing. This is another way in which you, the agent will ping an external host, in this case, the BlueJeans servers at whatever IP address that they're at. But then when you do this, you're actually looking at how long does it take for packets to get out to that server and back. Again, another way to validate uh, performance of your ISP. Or it's another way to validate, we see a lot of people doing this as well, validating VPN connections. You can do that either through subnet monitoring where you're looking at devices through the subnet, or you can do that through external hosts if you have a host IP name out there. So just a couple of tidbits on how you can uh, leverage round trip delay for uh, testing devices and looking at network performance. Um, I will point out, I said this earlier, but I wanna state it again, sending alerts up on um, latency can be a little bit tricky. You wanna make sure that you're looking at critical devices. In my mind, you wanna be focused on the wired devices as opposed to uh, Wi-Fi, because Wi-Fi by nature um, has a lot of variability in it when it comes to uh, networking. Um, and as I said earlier as well, latency in general is not a bad thing. If you're getting on average five, even 25 milliseconds um, for, I know if you're, if any of you are gamers, you just heard me say that and you're like, oh, hell no. But if you are um, dealing with systems that have an average latency that's fairly high in general, that's not a problem. Uh, it's just a matter of how do you deal with it and what is the system that you care about here. Um, to me, looking at variability of the latency or the latency changing over time is really what you wanna be concerned with because that's an indication that more devices are loading a managed switch or possibly loading a wireless access point or there is um, devices on the network that may be misbehaving. But in some sense, using this type of latency and looking at that over time is a great way to um, check this. Okay, enough on latency and network diagnostics. Let's talk about network security, one of, my, um, one of my more favorite topics going on right now. Under each uh, device, or excuse me, under each agent, under their dashboard, you'll notice we have this network security tab. When you click on this, um, we'll point out a couple things. One is we're capturing um, any time that uh, new devices show up on the network. So when you think about CIS controls, CIS control number one, right, the very first control, and it's there for a reason, is to understand what's on your network. Many service providers use RMM tools, and they know exactly which PCs, laptops, and servers that they are managing, but they may not know all of the other devices getting connected to the network, whether that is through the data LAN, the management LAN, um, any uh, guest networks, right? You have to be smart about where you're looking at devices and what you're trying to get alerts on. But understanding when devices show up on the network is an important part of what Domotes does. We're gonna do our best to try to classify these devices based on what they are uh, with make, model, and type. But more importantly, we're gonna tell you where these devices are getting connected. And, um, give you information about that as much as possible. The, um, so in my mind, CIS control number one, setting alerts when new devices are there is really what device discovery is about. There's another, well, there's two other CIS controls we should talk about. Um, when it comes to security though, um, looking at the security status of the firewall, and how devices are trying to access or how the cloud is trying to access your system is what this next section is about. When we do TCP um, open port scanning, essentially the Domotes cloud is looking back into 
the network where the agent is installed. And we are looking for any ports that may be opened at the firewall to devices within the network. Here you will see that on this network, we did discover this particular port 44158, which is open to a device. Um, I marked it as safe because I know what it is and I know what it's going to. Uh, but anytime a new port is discovered and we do these checks continuously over a 24 hour period, we will alert or flag if that's there. Most service providers are gonna have a really good handle of how their firewall is configured and what's set up, but Domotes essentially is doing a secondary check for that to see if the firewall or the rules that are put in place are in compliance. When an alert occurs, you will see it show up in this open ports found section. You then need to determine whether it's a legitimate port and can be accepted or marked as safe as I've done here, or you should reject it. Right? And if you reject it, the assumption is, is you're going into your firewall, you are managing that port, closing it off, or you're putting security in place to make sure that uh, proper authentication is on that port. There are some instances where having ports open makes a lot of sense. There are also instances where it does not make sense. Another thing that Domotes does is from the inside or on the LAN side, we will look for devices that are asking for UPnP port forwarding services. My assumption for many of uh, the service providers out there, you know that UPnP is a fairly legacy technology and a lot of the services that run on PCs, laptops or other machines don't need it. They have other ways of accessing the network. But in the case that your um, router or firewall does have UPnP enabled, if a device makes a request to this, it's going to show up in this page back and probably can go back to the site explorer and see uh, like this is a great example where we have a user that has several UPnP ports um, open. Right, so what we do is we'll discover the device, we'll look at the ports that it tried to open right, from a local as well as public perspective, and we'll provide as much description about it as possible. At this point, you can, um, Again, either accept these or reject these, depending on what the port is and what it's doing. Xboxes, um, Skype, Playstations, right? Very common for making these types of requests because they're looking for easy ways to access the uh, network, or I should say the web. So that is network security. Let's go back into this IoT lab where we do these demos. Um, I want to point out that you also should be thinking about each and every device that is discovered on your network and how that, uh, what ports are enabled there. So let's go to these cameras because they usually will have ports open. Um, you may recall that when we discover devices, we um, look for their MAC address, we enrich it and classify it, but we also do port scans of each and every device. Domotes fundamentally is doing these port scans for management purposes, but you should also be looking at these ports being open as potential vulnerabilities. So if you have a PC that has RDP, right, port, port 3389 open, that may be a red flag for you depending on what it is you're doing or what that device needs to be doing. Um, many devices, especially uh, IoT devices, use port 80, port 443 for management purposes. Again, awareness of what these are and on your network is very important. In fact, I will point out that CIS control number seven, um, a couple of the subsections, are understanding what devices are on the network, what ports are available on those devices, and questioning as part of the process, should they be open or not. So between looking at the firewall, looking at UPnP, looking at the devices and these ports, these are all ways in which Domotes helps with network security in general. Uh, let me make sure that I've covered some of the key topics here. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, good. Let's talk about everything that I've shown you has been from the, the basic dashboard within an individual site. One of the beautiful things about Domotes though is that it's a multi-tenant platform. So how do we take advantage of that? Well, on the left-hand menu, uh, by the way, I'll make a comment for everybody. Um, 
for you, those of you that are new or may have been aware, we've had, this has always been the Domo's traditional UI. Um, we started to rearrange things for our inventory and monitoring dashboards, which we're about to go into. But by popular demand, um, we're keeping this page. We're not getting rid of it because a lot of people like the ease of use and the way in which things display. So I'm excited by that because I think this is a very powerful interface, especially um, if you're in a more localized region where you have many uh, sites displayed throughout a particular town or area that you're in. So that's just something to be said there, and we're going to continue to modify and add to this. But let's talk about multi-tenancy and what we can do here. This inventory dash page is an extremely powerful page for you. All of the information that you have um, within each um, site or agent is displayed in one way or another on uh, each row of this table. You have the ability uh, to go to the Actions tab and uh, look at how your networks are configured. You can uh, make direct connections through VPN to the site as a whole. You can come in here and um, set up specific things like VLANs, right? All of the things that you can do within the different tabs, you can now do through uh, this page directly. You also have the ability to sort on these uh, systems. If you want to sort by which uh, sites have the least number of offline devices or the most number of offline devices, you can do that. Right? These are ways in which you can prioritize. You can sort by status if you want, right? If you want to look at which ones have uh, been offline for the longest or up the most recent, whatever it is, you can do that. You do have the ability, um, which I think this is kind of cool, is to go into the devices tab, the top, and you can now see all the devices on one tab table that go across all the sites that you're managing. Well, why is this so powerful? Well, if you wanted to look for specific things like Cisco SG350 based systems, you can easily filter by that by going into each column or let's close this out. If I wanted to, this would be a horrible example, but if I wanted to look for all the Apple devices, right, I can sort by all Apple, but then if I want to get more specific and look at just iPads, right, I can do that. Of course, you, there's different ways you can use these filters. Okay, you can filter, uh, I could have probably just put iPad because there's no other maker there, but if you um, wanted to um, kind of decode or decipher, the, decipher these things in more advanced ways, you can do that through these filters. Very, very powerful tool here. Um, a couple things I want to point out on this page is that this, in my mind, is the essence of the multi-tenancy of Domotes, and this is how you can easily take and um, better manage devices across all of your systems. In fact, if I were to, let's go back to that SG350 example. So I'll sort by SG350. So these are sites that have 350s in them. If I click on this one particular site or this device, excuse me, because I'm looking at the device now, okay, you'll see that I can look at how this thing is set up, right? What are the settings within Domotes and the way it's in which it's configured? You'll notice I have some SNMP sensors on it. I've got some TCP services we're looking at. SNMP authentication is set up as V2, but I can come in here and actually edit the community strings if that's what I wanted to do with this. Um, if I had a particular device that had other services or what we call insights running on it, okay? So when we talk about insights, we look at things like, is this device capable of SNMP? Um, do we do configuration backups? Do we, um, is it a security camera that does on viv support? There's a couple different like deeper interrogations that we can do on devices and it shows up under this insights column. You'll notice that you can even filter by things that are locked or unlocked. When a device is locked, it means that there's more, as you can see with this particular device, there's more we can get out of it if you give us either the SSH or SNMP credentials, whatever it may be. Um, more powerful than that, though, I think, is the ability to use this for templating purposes. So being able to take this device, if I was going to leverage this as a template, and export all of these settings within Domotes, um, I can save it as a um, I can save it as a JSON-based file. And then what I can do is, and I'm not going to do this because I'm pretty certain 
we would mess people up here. But I can then select multiple devices if I wanted to push that same configuration. I can import those device settings that I just saved off, and I can actually go in and select specifics as to what I want to import. Maybe I just want to import all the SNMP sensors. Maybe I want to import things like shared alerts that we're going to talk about um, in more details here. But those are just some examples of things that we can do uh, to better manage all of these systems and devices more efficiently. And this is just one quick way that I'm demonstrating that you can do this, but you can see how this could be an extremely powerful tool when it comes to uh, setting up new clients or, or taking clients and making mass changes across those. By the way, you can also do it at a sites level. So it has to be with things that you own and not things that you're collaborating, but if I select these two, I can come in and set shared alerts across these. I can change, let's say I had um, maybe a crazy example, but maybe I had a customer that I monitor five of their office locations, but then they changed their name. Okay, I can come in here and do that in one fell swoop across all five. So just again, a way to help you guys be more efficient. It's a powerful tool and I definitely want you to um, check this out more. This is the inventory management side of what Domotes does. Oh, one thing I should point out, I talked about the Sites Explorer, we've talked about this inventory page now and how you can use this for really managing all of the systems that are out there, whether it's by site or by managing individual devices, even being able to filter, like when you're in the, the devices page, if you wanted to just filter on uh, the types of device, right? You only wanted to look at audio video players, right, or audio video systems, you can do all that. We won't do that here though. Um, but this is a way for you to manage um, uh, these systems holistically. Another thing that our customers want to be able to do is monitor, just monitor, not necessarily manage, but monitor systems in a way that they want to see it, okay? Um, the important note that I wanted to make between the Sites Explorer, the inventory management page, and this monitoring page that we're gonna talk about here, the application as well, the web apps, um, will um, open back up to the page you last left. Why do I say that? If you always you know, are turning on Domotes and looking at this monitoring dashboard page, then this is gonna be what comes up for you. If you always like the Sites Explorer page, when you close it down and open it back up, this is the page that it should be going to. So just keep that in mind as you are leveraging this. Let's talk about the monitoring dashboards and then we'll get into some of the more advanced things that um, I said I'd touch on like SNMP and TCP services. This monitoring dashboard, when you first open it up, you'll notice a fairly blank screen. Think of it as a, um, a blank page for you to start monitoring all of the different types of systems and services that you want. When it comes to these dashboards, first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is add a dashboard. When it comes to uh, what I'm gonna call your process, the way in which you manage this, this is really up to you. We've left a lot of flexibility here. You can have dashboards sorted by name uh, of customers. You can have dashboards sorted by product manufacturer. You can have uh, dashboards sorted by important customers, right? It's up to you on how you um, call out these uh, dashboards, okay? But that's just some suggestions that I wanted to make. A um, Couple things that you'll, you'll notice when you um, add a dashboard, just give this some crazy uh, silly name, call it junk, so we'll throw it away. You'll notice that you need to start by creating a new table, two types of tables, okay? One is a device-based table, another one is a sensor-based table. Let's talk about device-based tables first. This is where you can look for across, again, all of the systems. This is not tied to one site. This is a multi-tenant and it's tied to all of the different devices that are out there. Again, let's get crazy and type the word Apple. So I'm sure there are plenty of Apple devices that are out there. If I wanted to look at all of them, go to add all, hit next. I now have brought any device that has the word Apple in it into this table. But now what I'm gonna do is look at which properties of these you know, Apple named devices or Apple um, queried devices I have. You can put things like model, you can put, um, if you wanna look at MAC address, you can. 
in the case that you have um, Windows-based machines, Linux-based machines, virtual machines out there, if there is operating system information that is associated with that and we have the credentials for it, we have the ability to show that here as well. We can provide network information. So a great one could look at a round trip delay. We can look at packet loss. Um, we can apply these. Oh, sorry. I should say two. Um, Apple's not going to be a good example of this, but if I had a managed switch or uh, uh, a NAS drive or some other device out there that I had specific sensors configured for it, I could pull those uh, sensors in here. You'll notice out of all the devices that I have, which there's probably hundreds, that have Apple in it, there's one that has some SNMP systems or uh, MIBs associated with it. But so I won't apply these for now. But once you apply uh, those properties, put Apple stuff, um, it will create this table that's here. I can go in and configure this table. I can put it in different uh, proportions depending on how I want to set it up. I can come add another table. Let's add a sensors table in this one, just so you see what it is. Um, on the sensors table, I'm really looking for pre-configured sensors within Domotes, which we're going to talk about here next. But let's just throw on partitions and volumes here. We'll create this. So this is going to uh, give me a, we'll just add all these devices. Uh, da, 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 da. So just add a few, how about that? So I don't even know what I'm particularly adding, but these devices are going to show any information that they have about tables. You, uh, This would be better to do with, uh, especially with partitions and volumes, either virtual machines or with a NAS drive. I don't know why I selected printers in this control four thing, because it doesn't have any data associated with it, but you kind of get the idea about how things can be configured and then set up. And you can place these tables um, as appropriate for your setup. My recommendation, uh, play with these monitoring tables. Think about important or critical devices that should get added to the tables that you want to generate alerts on. Um, think about sorting, filtering, and how you could use these tables to help prioritize um, maybe actions that you need to take um, or how you want to handle um, your service level agreements that you may have with your customers. The one thing that's interesting, you'll notice the um, you have the ability to um, prioritize the the filtering within these uh, systems, which I think is pretty darn cool. So this is just some of the uniqueness that this uh, these tables have. So again, powerful tool, great way to monitor um, devices uh, within your networks. Again, more multi-tenant devices across all your networks, and maybe even sort these things by customers or importance as appropriate. So best way to do it, uh, to learn about this, play with it. But you kind of got an overview for me on this. Next, I want to talk about, I want to get away from all of kind of this basic setup of using Domotes. I want to get to, and we can't dive into great detail on this, but we'll at least touch on a few key points. I want to talk about sensors and what it means to set up SNMP sensors if you haven't done that yet. Um, I always like to look at this um, device, Geist Watchdog. Um, it is a temperature humidity sensor that I have set up in a rack here. Um, let's first talk about SNMP. Um, we talked about this before, but because it's an SNMP device, you do need to make sure that the SNMP community strings or that the authentication is set appropriately. Under the access manager section within the info page of each device, you can do that. By the way, you probably saw this, but I wanna make a note of this. If you are at a particular site and you're using a common um, community string or you're using common like say V3 authentication across all your devices, you can go select all those devices and apply that across all your devices at one time rather than doing it individually. So keep that in mind. Once you have it set up, you will then be able to go to the SNMP tab. You'll see that the system can read appropriately. It talks about its authentication type. You will also notice on any device that if we have discovered that we have pre-configured sensors available for this, we will be able to add that. 
I already have some sensors here, so I'm not going to bother adding these um, MIBs or OIDs to it, okay? But I will show you how I got there. Um, you'll notice that within each sensor, okay, I put the particular OIDs, right, these long strings into this. Um, I gave it a description, but if you click on the chart, you will see the data that it, this is probably a bad one. Well, it's got enough variability on it. So um, you see that the dew point here, that's what it is, really is changing. A um, couple things to note, we're putting in the raw data for this information. So this dew point really is uh, based off of temperature. And the temperature is not 500 degrees, right? It's probably 50. Um, but it's in tenths of a decimal point, so we, we record it as such, right? Uh, same thing with like the temperature itself. It's not, uh, yeah, it's not a thousand degrees. I hope not. Otherwise, it's really hot in that room. But it's uh, it's really probably getting up to like a hundred in that rack where it is, which is still pretty warm, I'd say. Um, you can go in and add your own OIDs if you want. You can search for things. So when we discover devices on the network, we look for MIBs, right? The libraries that are associated with the OIDs. If you start to type um, general words like temperature, you will see all of the OIDs that are associated with this device based on the MIBs that we have. Vertif is the manufacturer of the Skyst Watchdog, so we have their MIB in our library. A couple points I'll say here. Um, if you have a system that the MIBs are not being discovered, but you know they're there, please email support at domos.com with those MIBs and we will put them in our library for you so that the next time you go to find it, you will see that. If you do not see um, those MIBs and you want to manually enter this because it's a custom system or you've modified libraries, you can come in here, give it a name, give it a description, put the OID, uh, tell us what type of output it is so that we can then add it to um, add it to the SNMP page. Once you have configured SNMP, in fact, I'm also going to talk about, well, you'll be able to set alerts. I'm going to jump to TCP real quick to talk about that before we get to the setting of the alerts. TCP, okay, is uh, essentially your uh, transmission control protocol, right, used by 802.3 802.11, right, to get information or packets across the network. Of course, the different protocols like HTTP are available to you. So if you start typing port numbers across here, like let's just type eight, because um, we'll eventually get to 80, right? You'll see all the different types of uh, TCP services. Whoops, that was not the right thing to hit. You'll see these different types of HTTP services that are available on these devices. This does not guarantee that a particular service is running. What this does is it says that Domotes is going to check that port for validity or for access. Okay. So in this system here, I put port 80 as a check. You'll notice that Domotes pinged port 80, which is the web based configuration port. In fact, it's pretty obvious because if you go to the connect page, you'll see that there are two ports available here, right? Port 80 and port 443. So those are known valid. But if this port 80 were to ever go away from uh, this device, I could set an alert or I could trigger an alert for this telling me that the page went down. Very useful for um, RDP on servers if you um, need to make sure that RDP is available on systems. Very good for checking web pages um, across systems. Good for checking things on external hosts that may be configured as well. So this is really, well, let me make sure I got all of my notes on this. Um, I, oh, I wanted to point, point out that um, one of the big values of TCP is that Domotes is going to do ICMP requests or pings to each device that's on the network. A lot of times in more advanced systems where they may have a network interface card that is offered by a third party, that network interface card may respond to pings just fine, okay? But to ensure that the system is actually working like a security camera or an automation system, you may want to leverage TCP to actually check for actual services running on that device. Port 80 is often a very good one to make sure that 
the processor that's running in that system is actually working and running. You can come in here and I'll go to the personal alerts, but you can come in here and start to set up alerts uh, for when the web page uh, goes down, which is the TCP services, or once you've configured SNMP sensors, you can then start to set up alerts when um, those events, particular events get triggered. Okay, And when you're doing these um, alerts, you can often go in and set up uh, things like if this sensor is you know, greater than or less than whatever to a particular um, value, then to email me through a notification. Or you can do the same exact things through shared alerts. Let's talk about that. Advanced alerting here. So configuring shared alerts. Again, I'm not going to go into a ton of detail around these shared alerts, but I do want to make sure that you understand uh, what the shared alerts are, are doing. Why do we call them shared alerts? Shared alerts are um, named shared because you can uh, share the different types of messaging channels with a particular event that gets triggered. So if I go to the alert settings on the left-hand side, you'll notice under shared alerts and ticketing systems, you can create a shared alert um, that you can associate with different contact channels. In fact, before you create a shared alert, you should note that you need to um, have the appropriate, what we call contact channels configured. You'll notice there are PSA systems, ticketing systems, uh, there are uh, messaging systems like Slack, Teams, Telegram that are out there. You can even integrate web hooks. So if you want to do push notifications to cloud-based services, you can do that. Rather than to go into great detail about each one of these, what I will tell you is that um, if you're using ServiceNow as an example, right, you need to get some information from your setup within ServiceNow, whether it's API keys, usernames, passwords, but I, I want to say here, the user guide here is your friend. So if you click on um, the user guides, you'll be taken to help.domos.com. Um, if you're in the right section, you'll go directly into the service that you're wanting to integrate. But a lot of information associated with how you do this and where you get information uh, from these systems. Okay. Um, in fact, if you just look at these ticketing systems, you'll see that we have quite a few um, and it, it, the list goes on and on. So be aware of that. Okay. Um, once you've configured that contact channel, right? These are the ways in which the um, shared alert will communicate. You can come in here and add those contact channels. Here you can see I've got a uh, uh, an auto task channel, but if I wanted to come in here and put Slack on here, I could do that as well, right? So now not only will it create a ticket and auto task, but it'll also do a push notification to Slack. All right. Um, you have to go in and set which events or the types of events that will trigger this shared alert. In this case, we have device goes up, device goes down. If I wanted to look at a managed switch and see when there's um, a change in the configuration file or on a firewall, I can do that. If I wanted to look at the temperature of that Geist watchdog, I would set that up here. Um, and then, of course, any network-based events as well, which is more associated with the agent as a whole. So if a new device is discovered and I want to push that information into a ticket and into Slack, I could do that here. You can color code these things. You can name them as appropriate. Right? So that's just a matter of what process you and your team want to use. Um, I, I should mention one other thing emails so if you want to go to a general email such as you know support at mycompany.com you can do that maybe you leverage that support email or that email to trigger tickets into your ticketing system another way in which you can um, get tickets to be automatically created by domos through these shared alerts i think this is an extremely powerful um, uh, portion of what Domotes does when it comes to helping you be much more efficient. If you guys have any questions about this, reach out to help.domotes.com as well as support and we will help you further with that. I want to talk a little bit about um, Alert Digest and how you can set that up. When you go to configure an Alert Digest, so this is under the Alert settings, 
you can set it up so that you are um, getting a consolidated list of the alerts that occurred in all of your systems uh, during specific times. In fact, you can do it over a whole 24 hour period, right? If you just wanna get a, let's say you're a manager and you wanna just see all of the alerts that have happened over uh, the last 24 hours, you can set that up to do that, right? You set the specific time you wanna get that digest sent to you, maybe it's first thing in the morning, and then you can review all that. Um, you may be leveraging your ticketing system to do this exact same thing, but this is just another way in which you can look at specific network-based uh, events that are occurring. If you uh, are scheduled during certain times, maybe you just have a standard workday of eight to five, but you wanna know what happened overnight, you can do that. You can start aggregating alerts uh, from, let's say, uh, start collecting alerts into the digest at 8.30 p.m. and then send it to me in the morning at 9.30 a.m. when I come in, right, the next day. All right, this is something that you can do as a way to consolidate um, your systems. If you, Even if you have email alerts set up to your personal um, email, this digest is going to block those emails from clogging up your inbox while it's digesting the information. And then in the morning, you're gonna get a single email with all of that info saved to it. So a great way to help you be more efficient. Um, one other thing that I want to point out is the ability for you to snooze alerts. So when you, I always like to show this really from um, the alerts tab within a site. So if you um, are in your alerts tab within a particular site, okay, you have the ability to snooze that site. Okay, right now we have alerts that are completely enabled, but if I turn this off here, you'll see that I can either disable them completely until I re-enable them, or I can snooze them. So let's say we know that I've got a, a fix on a particular job and I'm gonna have to take the network down or a switch down, um, and you know you're supposed to be completed by 4 p.m. the next day. You can come set up a specific time and date to have that alert come back on automatically. Essentially, you can snooze it for a period that you um, know you're going to be working on it. Just a great way to keep your ticketing system cleaner, keep your inbox cleaner. So, And a lot of people weren't aware that you could do this, but it was a, a widely requested feature, so we like to point this out. Last thing I'm going to talk about um, on this advanced training has to do with external services, okay? Um, when you discover, this is actually not the best site for this. When you discover uh, devices on a, when we discover devices on a particular site, and I'm thinking of which site we need to be looking at. Um, this one. When we, under the devices tab, when we discover devices within the network that may have external services associated to them, something like, as you'll see here, right, Cisco Meraki, you may see Ubiquity, okay? you may see other um, services where Domotes as a cloud service needs to communicate with another cloud service to get more information about that system. We have the ability, in fact, we're already, um, We've already associated this Meraki cloud with our site, which gives us the ability to interrogate the wireless access points a little bit more. But if it wasn't set up, you would see this devices external services tab show up, and then you can come in here and edit it. Again, I'm not gonna go into great detail here, but depending on the system that you're looking at, let me click on the user guide, Right, you're going to want to have information like your username, your password. You may have a specific um, dedicated user or and password that you will associate with the Domotes platform for that integration. It really just depends on the system that you're connecting it to here. So keep in mind that we can look at external services and to configure these, you really need to just go into that external devices tab, right, as shown here. Um, that's under that uh, agent that you want to associate. You may also, by the way, you may also need API keys, but it just, again, depends on the service itself. Um, along these same lines, you'll notice um, when we have um, specific integrations with things like 
external services that may be documentation related, okay? Whether it's things like IT Glue or Lion Guard are a great example, right? Other PSA tools. Um, I showed you how you can kind of connect those things under the shared alerts, but sometimes when it's a documentation system, you're not dealing with alerting. What you're doing is uh, dealing with inventory management and asset management. So coming in and setting up those services is something that's fairly straightforward. Um, again, I want to mention help.domboats.com as your path to success, but a lot of times it's as easy as putting in API keys and then associating which information from Domoats needs to be passed to that tool. We have a lot of um, guidance on screen and within the app, as well as our documentation services. So I think I'm at the top of the hour. This always goes long because there's so much information to provide. Uh, I'm going to point out help.domoats.com. I'm going to also mention our knowledge base. So uh, please leverage those when it comes to some of these more advanced features. Um, I will tell you that the different uh, pages within help.domoats talks about the different third-party software and uh, ways in which you can integrate uh, domoats into those platforms. Another thing that's always a hot topic, especially for a lot of custom integrators that are out there, is our use of APIs. So uh, you can always bring up, or if people have looked at this, you can go to portal.domoats.com slash developers um, and see uh, information about all of the APIs that our web app is based on. Check out our YouTube channel also. So this uh, broadcast is being recorded. We have a lot of other recordings that are there that have more technical topics that I would invite you to go see. That being said, let me ask Giancarlo, uh, do we, I haven't even been watching the questions and I know you have interrupted me, but were there questions that we need to get to here? Hi, JB. We had so many questions. Some of them are very technical and specific and have been addressed by our technical support team. So are, some of them are more, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And some of them are more generic. Uh, um, there were question, and, and you mentioned at the beginning when you said Domots is a multi-tenant platform, um, showing that through the, through the inventory you can have access to multiple sites. Uh, something that somebody was asking is uh, if there is any connection with the customer and sites. And uh, actually, there is already um, somewhere in the tool where you can specify which customer every single site belongs to or every single agent. But more importantly, in the, in the next few days, actually in one week, we will add a new tab in this inventory, which, is, will, which will be called Organizations, where you can basically organize all of your customers and then the sites among those customers all in one place so definitely it's a tool for multiple uh, um so for multi-tenancy there yes um, i'm excited for that change or yeah. so i think it could be really good um there, there has been a couple of questions about slowness of the application to desktop app um jb if i understood correctly you're using a desktop app right now and we, we couldn't experience any slowness but it's worth to mention yeah. that the entire platform is a cloud-based solution. Um, there might be some delays in some of the API call behind, not behind the scene. So this is just a, a sort of app on the API that we call on our cloud. Um, we are continuously monitoring the uh, behavior of our cloud infrastructure, which by the way, it's hosted on AWS, and we'll make sure that it's always on top of um, availability rates, basically. Yeah. Giancarlo, one thing that um, I just did that I want to make sure I point out to people too, which some people may not realize this, but whenever you log into Domoats, if it's been sitting there for a while, you can pull down the devices here and do a refresh of those devices, which I think is a, a really good feature that people should be aware of, just so that it keeps everything up to date and it does a refresh with those APIs in our cloud. Yeah, I agree. I completely agree. Uh, there is one question that just came in and has not been addressed. Probably it's worth to be addressed. It's from CV. Uh, it's asking if uh, Domots will completely replace a traditional RMM platform and if there is any major RMM features still missing in Domots. I can speak about the uh, 
the feature uh, and JB, if you get, want to cover no, uh, the why, we are not going to replace an RMM, a traditional RMM solution for endpoints. It's, uh, yeah. it's not in our strategy, let's say. Uh, in terms of feature, something that definitely, definitely is missing in Domots is patch management on endpoints. So you will not be, um, you will not be allowed, let's say, to uh, perform patch management across multiple Windows machine or Mac, Mac OS machine or Linux server. Um, that's mainly one of the things that is currently missing Domots and we are not investing in that direction at the moment. Even though, no, as you probably mentioned through the OS monitoring, we are able to extract a lot of information out of Windows machine, uh, Linux machine, even um, virtualization environments like VMware and so on. We extract information about disks, we extract information about old virtual machine, information about like memory, CPU, but we are also extracting the list of applications installed on the machine. And this list is uh, currently available through the API and it will be available soon in the UI as well. But yes. still, we don't want to replace a traditional RMM through which you can install your own uh, antivirus, you can manage the patch of Windows and so on. So I would also, Giancarlo, I would also point out, and, and any service provider out there knows this right now, but when you look at um, the things that Microsoft and Google are doing with respect to the different platforms and cloud-based services, um, I think getting into the traditional RMM space is not, um, it's needed, it's absolutely necessary, but there are much more efficient tools out there. Domotes really focuses on the network uh, based side of management. Now I mentioned in this webinar CIS controls and a lot of, a lot of the CIS controls, while it's fundamentally a process, really require a network monitoring tool to understand all the assets that are associated with the network and understanding how to manage and monitor that network infrastructure, which we feel focusing on that is the best thing for service providers to, uh, to deal with. Yeah, no, very valid point, JP. And I think we are longer, but there, were, there have been other questions and some of them might be addressed with the usage of custom integration drivers. Oh. Um, yeah, it's uh, basically, JP mentioned about all the integration that we have on the local network, how we extract information out of devices and so on. All these integrations are usually developed by us and the code is in the cloud. We are allowing now users to write their own script, uh, which can be executed against any single device. And why I'm mentioning that is because one of the capabilities is also, for instance, to check on every single endpoint if a specific library is installed or not, and then having a command to upgrade the specific library. So imagine you discover that one of the libraries is affected by CVE and you will run you want to run this script against all your endpoints, you will be able to do that through Domots. Yeah. I, the, we didn't talk about the custom integrations driver. We do have uh, webinars on that, very technical webinars about that, where we give demos about how you use this code, how you write this, how you validate it, and what it does for you. But you're exactly right, Jean Carlo. This this custom integrations driver uh, platform that we have within Domotes makes it a very very powerful tool. Very good. Yeah, yeah, I agree, JP. Jean Carlo, as you know, I spoke way too long. Um, but we're about 10 minutes over, so we should probably um, follow up with any other questions via mail. Yeah. So thank you very much for your time, everybody. Really appreciate um, you watching. And if you have any other questions, please reach out to support at domotes.com um, and uh, we'll get out there. I should mention just as one last thing, there is an onboarding guide as well um, at help.domotes.com. So if you want to have a guide that kind of walks you through the 101 and 201 and the things you need to be thinking about as you set stuff up, uh, check that out. So thank you very much and have a great rest of your day.